Hey guys, welcome to another Quinn LED video, and this one is going to be a good one, because the new Quinn LED Dig Uno, well, I just hit save on my website on quinnled.info, and the boards are available. But let's take a look at what it is and what makes it different from, uh, well, my previous boards. Okay, so my previously released board, or at least last year, is the Quinn LED Quad and the Quinn LED Deca. I had a Quinn LED OG before that, and although that design still works perfectly well, they've basically been superseded by these boards. So the Quad is, as the name implies, a 4-channel dimmer, and this one is a 10-channel analog dimmer. That means on this one you can hook up an RGBW strip, and on this one, you can actually hook up uh, two RGB plus CCT, so with warm and cold white strips. And what you can do with that is basically, well, what you see around me. My film lighting is done using these dimmers, and also the lighting behind me is done using these dimmers. But, as I said, that is what is called an analog LED controller or an analog LED dimmer. Nowadays, you have something different, and that is called digital RGBs. And those differ in that instead of having to make the whole strip one single color, you can actually determine the color per LED. And well, the difference of that looks a little bit like this. So right now it's in single color mode, as you could call it, and basically it simulates an analog LED strip. But with a push of the button in Home Assistant, I can actually select a pattern to use. And as you can see, it's become a sort of rainbow pattern. And while I have different patterns programmed into Home Assistant, and while this is a very fast rainbow pattern, this is a different kind of rainbow pattern, and then there's like, uh, okay, let's uh, make a little dot run over it, and you can select the color of the dot, and, well, you can design any effect you like. Actually, let's turn off the analog LEDs, or at least the ones in the back, and see what other digital LEDs I hooked up. Okay, that looks a lot different, and this is all run using the Quinn LED Dig Uno LED controller. And well, I have the PCBs for it, and as I started in the beginning, if you want to build one of these controllers, you can do so on quinnled.info, so make sure to give that website a look. And there's also a lot more info on there about LED strip, which you should buy, what you should watch out for, and tutorials on how to make these effects and stuff like that. Now, I have several different things hooked up. As you saw earlier, I could control that LED strip using Home Assistant, and it has a Quinn LED Dig Uno with an ESP32 on there, which is running ESP Home, which is in turn connected to Home Assistant. So that way you can use it for single colors or effects, and you can schedule those or automate those or whatever you want to do with it. And then you see the, uh, the Christmas lights hanging here. Those are controlled using a Quinn LED Dig Uno, which has an ESP8266 inside. So I decided to base this design on the Wemos D1 Mini and the Wemos D1 Mini ESP32. I'm not sure what they're called, but... Basically, they're the same form factor, but you can either get an ESP8266 or a 32. And depending on what horsepower you need and what program you want to run, you can use either one of those on the same board. So that's pretty unique, I think. But it's also, well, these are like one and a half bucks and uh, these are like seven bucks. So it saves you a lot of cost if you don't need the more expensive one, but you can use it if you do need it. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, the Christmas lights, those are running the McLighting uh, Arduino sketch. Since it's an ESP8266, it's compatible with a lot of software out there. Because actually, well, uh, the, the LED bar you see behind me is running custom and custom Arduino sketch using Fast LED. And then I have um, one of these LED panels here, and it's really bright. Uh, and this one is use, using the ESP Pixel Stick for, firmware, and I have X lights running on a PC, so it's sending it real-time, well, pixel information wirelessly, 
and you can make basically display anything you want. So this is all a bit technical. Um, but yeah, I guess this is, is a technical video. But basically, the Quinn LED Dig Uno is a DIY, you can build it yourself, LED controller. And, well, it's very versatile. You can use the, the very popular and famous WS2812B or NeoPixel LED strip. But it also works with SK6812s or even, and that's in that uh, giant tube over there, APA102 LED strip. And those, instead of using one clockless wire, use two. They have a clock and a separate data wire. But basically, any LED strip out there, you should be able to use with this controller, given you have the right code for it. So, speaking of the code, if you look at the website, I have an outline with the features of the board, and we'll go over that in a little bit. Uh, but then there's a hardware guide, and the hardware guide will show you all the components you need with links to AliExpress. That is my main source of components because it's often cheapest. It's not fastest, but it's cheapest to get it there. But I also have Amazon links and where possible, I also have Banggood links. Then the next page is about the pinout and wiring, especially because we can put two different controllers on the board. It's got a bit more complex than it normally is, but I'm hoping this uh, table will show you which pins are available and which pins you should use with which microcontroller. Speaking of that, there is a temperature sensor on board. If you want to uh, include that in your sketch or use it in Home Assistant with ESP Home. And there are four GPIO pins broken out you can use for things like buttons, sensors, or whatever else you might think of. A bit further down on that page, you can see some wiring diagrams I made to show you, once you complete this, how you should hook it up. And that talks about uh, lower density and higher density LED strip and shorter and longer, what you should do with power distribution. And it shows all these in nice, easy to understand pictures for if, if you've never done this before, I can understand this being kind of daunting to start with. And that is basically what this controller is for. Yes, you can take a node MCU or whatever, hook up some DuPont cables and tinker it all together and then often it will work okay. But if you're serious about doing this stuff, you kind of need more. You want a level shifter on the board, which this board has, to translate from 3.3 volt to 5 volt, so that the steering signal for all the digital LEDs doesn't get lost over the wires or degrade. And then you also want to take your power delivery serious. Now, as with, my, with all of my boards, I've taken power delivery very serious and using a standard board like this, you can deliver 15 amps through the board. Now what that does, it makes cabling a little bit easier because you can run power through the board instead of having to use separate wires from your power supply and power the board at the same time and stuff like that. Continuing with features, one of the other things I did was include a car style fuse socket on the board so you can have some fusing uh, in your whole wiring setup making it a bit safer because uh, led strips are often 5 volt or 12 volt and this controller is compatible with both if you use the optional 12 volt dc dc converter on there if you're not going to use 12 volt you can leave it off save some cost again but because it's often 5 volt there is a lot of amperage involved and if there's a short somewhere this can create a fire now, what I've done on the board, I've made it so there's reverse polarity input and output protection. And well, basically, if you hook it up wrong, the fuse will blow, which costs you a few cents, instead of destroying your LED strip, or worse, causing a fire. Um, other features are, as I said, the temperature sensor. You can use two types of microcontroller. Uh, and well, basically, it's easier to wire up. It has all the caps you want to stabilize the power and limit inrush power to the LED strips on board. It has a very good level shifter, so that basically works with any LED strip, even APA 102s, uh, delivering the right voltage signal to the strip. And, well, there's nothing you can't do without this board, but this board just makes it easier. And especially if you want to make installations around your house or for Christmas lighting or stuff like that, 
I can highly recommend using boards like this instead of having breadboards with uh, DuPont wires hooked up. And uh, I'm not really a fan of that. It works. I know it works, but uh, especially if you want to run a few, uh, few like these, and I have some special projects planned with these, and you'll see those in the future. Um, yeah. I really, really recommend uh, using a bit more decent solution than just a breadboard with a controller or DuPont wires and stuff like that. Doesn't mean it have to has to be my controller, but well, I'd like it if it was. <laughs> so what can you do with these boards? Well, as I said, you can run any Arduino sketch out there, uh, like ESP Home or a custom fast LED with cast custom fast LED effects or mech lighting as you see in my christmas lights or as i mentioned and i'd like to highlight this a bit more um, the e1.31 compatible protocol and this quinn led is actually running the esp pixel stick firmware esp pixel stick also provides some hardware and it kind of does the same but uh, there's some different design decisions in there and well, it's, it's okay um but you can make this do well basically anything you want and you can design it in software real time hold on like for instance i can make a display uh well text like this so i have a dedicated video which shows off all the effects you can do with x lights and the esp pixel stick firmware on a quinn led dig uno and that highlights a lot better all the effects you can achieve and stuff like that especially if you're using multiple controllers and you put them in your cabinets or behind your TV or anything like that. And this controller, and I've worked on the board design and the web pages to go with that for months now. So I'm really f glad I can finally release it. Um, this just makes your projects that much easier. And if you're not that comfortable with soldering or doing projects yet, but you do want these uh, nice LED effects in some of your projects, maybe give this controller a go. So as I mentioned, all the information is on quinnled.info and it has tutorials how to set up X lights, how to upload the firmware, ESP home configuration, soldering tutorials, component highlights, anything you need. And well, if not, let me know down in the descriptions or on our Discord server. And uh, there's, there's me, I'm there, it's my Discord server. But there's also other people there with knowledge and who might be able to help you. So thank you for watching. And uh, as I said, let me know in the comments if you need anything else, what you think about the board. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.